The Snotling Pump Wagon is a true engineering marvel. By forcing a worthless little snotling to pretend that this lever is a trampoline, we can harness enough energy to propel the entire contraption headfirst into certain death at 60 ambiguous units of speed. The upside of this is that it often succeeds in killing the enemy. The downside is nothing, because the entire contraption and crew are made entirely out of a renewable resource. Worthless fucking garbage. We begin with a fairly functional and well-balanced army. How disgusting. We must remedy this immediately by banishing each and every Wheel Void unit to the Shadow Realm and rolling headlong towards an enemy army comprised entirely of the unwashed, subjugated proletariat and their metal-clad oppressors. Faced with these odds, any rational human being would simply retreat and recruit more units. Fortunately, I am far from rational. But even if I was, we are completely unable to recruit any units whatsoever for around the next 15 turns. To win this battle, all we needed to do was tempt the bourgeoisie into charging headlong into Grom's voluptuous ass crack, then crush them into dust with a rear charge from these wonderfully devious spiky rollers. Once the surviving knights had thoroughly dishonored themselves by running away from snotlings, we simply charged the peasants, then charged the peasants, then charged the peasants. Charging is one of the primary themes of this campaign, as it's going to be our only way of dealing damage without getting absolutely obliterated in the process. When your vehicles are held together by duct tape, garbage, and the hopes and dreams of an illiterate snotling, even the slightest damage can prove fatal. So the only winning move is to simply not let anyone hit you. With that first army out of the way, all we need to do is take this small settlement. The only problem is that they have over a thousand peasants, and I have nine pump wagons, plus one Grom. Fortunately, this means that the odds are entirely in my favor in the actual battle. All we really needed to do was cycle charge them repeatedly for over 40 real minutes while avoiding the spears. They have two units of spearmen, and a quarter of a peasant mob remaining. That is all. As long as we have full energy here, I'm very confident that we win this. The balance of power is in our favor, but this is a bad matchup too. We're gonna go between these two units of spearmen. We're gonna route this last peasant mob. Okay, they're already gone. Actually, <laughs> they, they routed before I did that. I really, I was so convinced that that was gonna be a tough last stand. So now that we have this settlement, the world is our oyster. We could go north to the Bretonians, south to the Bretonians, east to the Bretonians, or west to the High Elves, and some more Bretonians. So what do we do for the next 10 turns? Fuck all. We can't recruit any pump wagons yet, and we're still far too weak to do anything of value. The only thing we have going for us is that being very shit and doing absolutely nothing is extremely cheap. So we're saving up over 2,000 gold per turn. Ten turns later, after a few boring battles, we're finally able to recruit more pump wagons. The only problem is that a full Bretonian army is just standing next to my settlement. Menacingly. Because I know they have another army that could force march to reinforce if I just chill and recruit, I have only one good option. Attack them. This was not easy, given that we're hilariously outnumbered, but after I killed their lord, just kill her real quick, and she's dead, she's dead, she's dead. Oh, that's so wonderful. Their dog shit leadership allowed me to route each unit with just a single charge, taking like no damage in the process. Hit and run, and then hit again, and then run again, and then hit again, and then run again. It does get slightly repetitive, but its effectiveness is undeniable. After that, I just chased him down, finished him off, bada boom, whole stack fucking destroyed. Nice. Now, at long last, on turn 12, we can finally start recruiting some fucking pump wagons. We need the global, we need the local, we need all the pump wagons. All of them. Don't immediately attack me, give me a couple turns of recruitment, and we are good. I will fucking roll you. Yes, not attacking me. Yes, thank you. We'll just go for the armor on all of them, fuck it. I want to just make them as resilient as possible. Actually, it's not going to be too long, it's going to be five turns until we can recruit the better variant. So I'm not actually going to get any more of these upgrades, because I'm not going to keep these guys for that long. I could go for their main settlement first. But yeah, I think I go down here, I take this, and then I work my way back up there. And we definitely have enough units to take settlements and stuff like that now. Not an auto-resolve. We're not going to be auto-resolving a goddamn thing in this campaign. Because the pump wagons currently perform much, much better in real battles than they do in auto-resolve. Uh, I don't care about you because you're far enough away that you're probably not going to attack me immediately. And if the balance of power is even, that means that I'm actually like 95% stronger than you. Uh, okay, Lucky Banner, Call to Wall. Oh, I could do that. Ooh, charge bonus and control are not bad, actually. I think I can get back to another wall super quickly, so I think this makes sense, actually. I've had crashes randomly when getting rid of wall units before, so we're gonna try this. Okay, no crash. No crash. Also, no wall. 
It got rid of it completely. Maybe I should have left one unit in there to see if any pump wagons would have joined. Eh, whatever. We don't fucking need them, boys. Okay, they do have an army in here. That's a little scary. Unkillable, Grom. Unkillable indeed. Or at least hopefully. We'll, we'll see. We'll test that. We will test that. If he is killable, he will be killed here. Okay, you are selling out there. Oh, yeah. They're gonna have a two-minute reinforcement time. We can wipe out this whole army before then. This is where we're gonna start to really see the strength of this strategy and, you know, this army overall. I wouldn't say that it's viable at all to start with only pump wagons. That was fucking ridiculous and extremely painful and hard. But now that I've really got the hang of them and I feel like I know what I'm doing, I'm extraordinarily confident that we just win this. So we're gonna charge the middle here very hard. We're gonna charge that. I think these guys are isolated enough that we can deal with them and then Grom is gonna distract them over here. They weren't really bracing for the most part, which is very good for us. Oh, that's such good damage. Oh my god, that's such good damage. And then you guys all pull out here. Knights Errant there are not actually going to trade well against this number of pump wagons. And I think you guys all just surround those Knights Errant. You guys just keep leaving here. Okay, we're all going to charge these lads. Okay, these guys are starting to route. They shouldn't last much longer. This army's actually not proving too hard to micro, because they're not like as fast as cavalry. You can't really get yourself into an issue that quickly. Um, so as long as you're making good moves... You don't need to be that micro-heavy. I'm definitely not playing this on, like, 2x speed or anything, though. That would be, that'd be tough. It's the same game of isolating units and all that, but we have so many more resources on our side uh, that it's much easier and much less tedious. And they're gone. Oh, that was so ridiculous, but it works so fucking well. These units are just too good right now. I, I won't say that these guys are, like, broken, but when they're used perfectly, which is not that hard against the AI... They are so strong. That's not a lot of damage. And we wiped out a bit over a full stack, I think. I'm not sure. I didn't do the math. They were shit units, though. Keep that in mind. But we are also technically shit units. These guys cost less than 100 upkeep for us in Grom's army, so... <laughs> because I wasn't able to encircle the settlement, the AI gets big replenishment buffs on very hard, and they happened to finish upgrading their city on this exact turn. The garrison actually got stronger after I beat its ass the first time. Luckily, it wasn't too hard to replicate, although I did take a fair bit of damage in the proper siege from their shiny new pole arms. We're just gonna occupy this. We don't need the gold in the short term at all. Our economy's so good. Oh, yes, they have that there. We just go for the local there. Bada boom. I could start going for a second army here. I could probably afford that because these guys, in any other army, they're like 125 upkeep. And in Grom's army, they're only 63. My income is not that good, but I have 36,000 gold and I can get a lot more by sacking. Unfortunately, there's no option for chariots for generic greenskin lords. For the record, I double-checked and it turns out that orc war bosses can actually ride a warboard chariot, but only a multiplayer for some reason. There's no way to get it in campaign. Oh, they do have the army down here still. Uh, they're probably gonna come back in there, I'd imagine, and then I'll just kill them all. <laughs> Very good. Oh, can you actually reach that? Holy shit, you can reach me there. That's good. Awesome. Hello, friend. You're gonna fucking die. Ooh. The Grail Guardians are gonna hurt like a son of a bitch. Balance power is really not too bad. The matchup is not good. This seems to be the soft side. We charge this right away, and then we have these guys keep moving back here. Okay, the Grail Guardians are coming in here. That's bad. And the Paladin. Okay, but that means they're not on this side. Um, this is just a bad situation overall. There's not much that can be done about it. Yes, push through, push through, push through. Okay, Paladin, bad. Bad Paladin. The Grail Guardians have 32 kills, 1,000 value. Fuck. We are doing a good job of isolating some units, especially over here. That's really great, but overall, we just don't have the strength for this. We, we have no counter to the Paladin. We have no counter to the Grail Guardians either. Great over here. The problem is that the Paladin and the Grail Guardians and their Lord combine to be like 80% of their balance of power. Ugh, God. The Grail Guardians just fucked the balance of power there. Uh, I don't think we lost many units. And I do actually think we did a lot of damage to them. That was a very valiant defeat. They're not chasing after us. We can back off here. Because of the AI cheats, they are recovering faster than us. A lot faster. Yeah, we have enough of a garrison there that we for sure beat them. If they encircle us, we still win this. So we're, we're fine there. And then we will be very tight on our economy, but we can push in here and take this. Okay, you're being cringe. Even though I'm not recruiting anything, with the garrison there, I easily fucking demolish you. <laughs> Boys, the plan is simple. We march our entire garrison into certain death, then charge their sides in rear with the pump wagons. Fortunately, we were able to isolate the Fey Enchantress, and Grom, being the very nice guy that he is, tipped his fedora towards her and caused her to immediately sprint in the opposite direction, retreating from the battle. 
Cycle charging effectively is much easier when you have infantry to pin down the enemy, which is why we won this fairly resoundingly. The only thing that really survived was their paladin and a few miscellaneous units, but not with much health at all. It is in our favor. I think Grom kinda solo tanks this because he has so much regen. And that's one model replenished on each of them it looks like, so that's great. Actually, why can't I move? It says I have 71% movement range remaining, but I can't move. And there's a paladin from that army bugged into Grom. I'm going to grab some more units here. I'll give it two turns and then I'll try to move again. And if I can't, then this campaign might just be over. It's been over a year since Immortal Empires. And this, this type of shit that literally breaks the entire campaign and makes it unplayable still happens. So unfortunately at this point, I had no real choice but the save scum. My last save before the bug was all the way back on turn 18 after they attacked me the first time but before they encircled the settlement. So after I refought all of this, I ended up with much more health remaining and I didn't lose the spiky rollers because I knew exactly what the AI would do. This sucks, but I don't have any way to perfectly replicate the battles, so I guess it is what it is. And yeah, we should take two of their settlements next turn, leaving them with only one, which is just incredible. Soon we get that, that's also very good. It's not actually that great, but ward save, great. The ability is very good too, it's, it's just not constant. Can we auto-resolve it? Of fucking course we cannot. <laughs> not one, not one auto-resolve this campaign. <laughs> Bit of damage, but overall I'm happy with that. Oh my god, we can't even auto-resolve this, man. Two units of men-at-arms with shields, two units of spear men at arms with shields, four units of peasant mobs, and two peasant bowmen pox arrows. We have nine snotling pump wagons and three spiky roller snotling pump wagons and our lord. And we have a valiant defeat auto-resolve. So we're going to use the brilliant strategy to win this defeat auto-resolve of moving forward. That's it. We literally just charge them. And we have lost zero Snotling Pump Wagons. A grand strategy of move forward and eventually charge them worked very well. <laughs> that is actually hilarious. Zero losses. Oh, I should have swapped this over for the recruitment capacity. Oh, I'm fucking stupid. Oh, I forgot about that until just now. Ugh. That was genuinely a bad move on my part. <laughs> okay, they're getting a new army there. I'll wipe that out soon, but I don't need to do that instantly. Oh yes, we just barely hit rank 12. Oh, beautiful. Okay, this doesn't actually matter, but leadership horror size is good. 15 growth, all provinces, and 5% casualty replenishment rate for the Lord's Army. Yeah, we already have the defeat trait from the Fey Enchantress, so that's 10%. That's 15 total. That's awesome. This is just good for Grom overall. 8% physical resistance and 8% hit points. And chariot races. This is where it gets serious. 10 more armor. We already have plus 12 from this. Plus 12% speed. Plus... Perfect Vigor. Perfect Vigor, specifically on chariots, is one of the most valuable traits in the game. It is just absolutely insane. I would say that it is only a slight bit below regeneration in terms of its usefulness, because we can just keep fighting at maximum effectiveness, and most importantly, maximum speed for like the entire battle, no matter how long it takes. So that is just absolutely incredible. You're declaring war on me. That probably, hopefully, might be fine. Uh, that's cringe. That is cringe. Please don't do that. All right, we're gonna have to force march back here. That sucks. Uh, I just take this and then I keep moving in. Once again, zero losses. Once again, loss auto resolve. We're in the negative, but our economy is honestly completely acceptable in the negative for a little while here. Uh, I don't mind that in the slightest. Oh, I do need a new recipe. Oh, casualty replenishment plus 10% all armies. That is one of the best ones I have access to then. Uh, none of my other bonuses actually apply other than these two, so I may as well just use these two. Absolutely great. We'll slap that there. Ooh, how the fuck did you get there? Okay, that's actually fine. That They killed my enemy and fucked off. That's great. Ooh, you're going back and forth. Oh, you got the Fae Enchantress back. Ooh, God. Ugh, eh, ugh, gross. So cringe. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> Oh, that army comp. Yeah, I'm force marching. I do not give a fuck. Uh, we can't reach this. We can't reach her, so we attack this, obviously. Crushing defeat. Absolutely crushing defeat. Wow, incredible. Grom breaks the gate. The pump wagons go through the gate. The pump wagons kill all of them. That is the plan. 
This was a pretty fun one, at least for a settlement battle. Grom's fishy breath ability from our current cauldron dish got quite a bit of value, and overall we sort of slowly steamrolled them. Cycle charging and settlement battles may be possible, but my god is it painful. Still though, we didn't take too much damage despite not taking the control point, so I'm happy with this overall. There we go. Alright, crushing defeat auto resolve, this will be a very trivial fight. So here's the difference between the normal pump wagons, just the snotling pump wagons, versus the flappers. These guys are really cool. I, I love the goblin up top with like the dragon wings, he's just holding them and flapping them. Very, very cool design. Absolutely gorgeous. And then the spiky rollers. These ones are just brutal. Oh my god, this is just brutality. Oh no. Oh my god. This is, this is just the most insane battle. They were not prepared for this. They were not prepared for this one. <laughs> oh, that is an actual war crime. Holy shit, they're all routing immediately. They're just gone. Uh, we could chase this down, but we don't really need to, honestly. I mean, that was just so easy. I'm not concerned about it. Yeah, she's dead. <laughs> That's a problem, though. I take that back super easily. And, oh my god, we finally get an auto-resolve! The first auto-resolve of the entire campaign! Oh, that is literally a hundred times more damage than we would have taken in a real battle, but that's fine. I don't care. I'm just happy we got one. We got one fucking auto-resolve. And then we will begin next episode by besieging these lads. Starting right where we left off, Grom the Paunch and the Snotling Brigade are about to destroy Castle Bastone. The only real thing I'm afraid of is one, the Paladin, and two, the Pole Arms. Oh, we're not even getting through the gates like this. For some reason, every pump wagon felt the need to do 10 donuts in front of the gate before actually going in. Gorgeous fishy breath there, absolutely textbook. I want these guys to break down the gate, but I know it's probably going to take them a while. We're not doing great against the pole arms, but those archers are going down and the balance of power is going up. It's been five full minutes and the pump wagons have barely taken out half the health of that gate. There's the army losses. My god, I should not have fought it that way. These guys never knocked down the gate. They were hitting it for almost 15 minutes non-stop. I should have ran them around here and come in here behind my main army. I just didn't think that would need to happen. I, I really play that like shit, I'm not gonna lie. But to be fair, these guys really should be able to knock down gates. Oh, they finally got it! We can start building up a small third army here that eventually will be a proper third army. Ha! <sighs> shit. Oh, that's good. Okay, he backed off. Hopefully he doesn't come back too soon. A war against Skaron won't be easy, but their main army just fought a few battles, and I expect they'll declare war on me anyways as soon as they recover. Even though we don't lose any units there, we fight this. I just don't want to take too much damage. And we lost one pump wagon because I was playing that all on 3x speed. I want to kill these guys. I think we beat them. The balance of power is only slightly in our favor, but realistically, that looks like a very good matchup from what I can see there, so... Yeah, you are definitely going to take that back, for sure. No question. 4,000 free gold for selling that. Fuck it. Ugh, Orion. I thought he was going to come over here or something, but he just went right back over there. That's so cringe. The ever-so-honorable King Luan appears to be a little upset at us raiding in his territory. That's overall not quite as bad as I thought it would be. These guys are going to be a major, major problem. The only really good thing for me here is that they have seven units of peasants, including the horsemen, and they're going to get zero value against me. They also don't have quite a full stack, although I don't either. They've just sent these guys up to die, apparently. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, that's fine. We're sending the Pegasus Knights up first. That's kind of good because they are kind of squishy. The Pegasus Knights here just decided to die. I'm going to see if I can send all my units over here and then just completely wipe these guys out. Those are some of the more dangerous ones. Okay, these guys are gone, more or less. We're going to all charge them, those Knights of the Realm. Okay, as long as we're wiping their units out fast, that's, that's great. Uh, keep fighting those Knights of the Realm. We're kind of losing here, that's fine. Over here and over here we're winning. Okay, we use that law immediately, I think. The balance of power is actually, like, pretty solidly in our favor now. Uh, the Paladin's actually going down surprisingly effectively to the Pump Wagons. I don't think that's supposed to happen, but it is, so I'll, I'll take it. Uh, yeah, they're both- Oh my god, we got the army losses on them! We actually didn't even take that much damage there. We might have lost, like, one or two units, but what the fuck? That was just so good. I'm less impressed by our damage output and more impressed by our lack of taking damage quickly. Wow, that's good. And we recovered there because we're in raiding stance. Oh my god. Low sack value, but I mean, this should be easy. We just fucking push in through here. Once more, the tried and true green skin strategy of charge them proves very, very effective. Yeah, we target the units in the back, and this whole blob 
of pump wagons all physically just push through them. I'm spread a little too thin here. Just a little too thin. All right, first I'm going to handle this. He's not backing off. I think I have these guys charge this army as soon as possible. I fight every unit that I can, and then I back off, and then I have all of these guys fight Orion. Because Orion is going to trade hilariously well against the pump wagons. They're not going to do anything to him under any circumstances. Uh, fuck. I didn't actually consider reinforcement time. Nothing suspicious here. <laughs> No, no green skins hiding in these trees. You can't see anything. Yeah, even from literally all the way back here, they are, they are quite visible. <laughs> they are not well hidden there. But it works. It works. All right, uh, 25 seconds. We're good. Oh, I could probably use Blacktooth's Conjuration onto Orion. I've gone back and forth on my rules about summoning units. I think it's funny and cool enough that I'm going to use the Rogue Idol summon. Not the cleanest engagement here for sure. We do have the trees to worry about, and they also have quite a few spears. But on this side, we kind of just charge these Eternal Guard very hard. Unfortunately, they do get some really good counter charges on both sides with the Wild Riders. They are just incredibly good cavalry. Here, those counter charges did fucking hurt. You can see a couple models died there. Oh, the poor little Flappa. Our leadership's very bad in this army in particular, but we're doing okay despite that. Like, even though they're routing, they will come back. I might even use this early. Yeah, I think I do. It's time for the big boy to take on Orion. He's gonna give him a fucking bear hug. Oh my god. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, this is not the best matchup for him because Orion is absurdly anti-large and he is absurdly anti-infantry, but specifically against, like, blobs, he's so good. Man, I just love this guy. Oh, wow. Their leadership is so high. Yeah, they're effectively unbreakable under Orion, really. Balance of power is good, though. Okay, this is looking good now. Now we have a mass route. It took forever. And Orion's at half health. That's great. We're gonna have most of the pump wagons pull out here. Uh, now I can afford to essentially just allow um, the garrison to die against him until he eventually dies himself. Yeah, they are shooting him a bit. I think it's valuable even if we do some friendly fire. Beautiful. Beautiful. That was not bad at all. That is a really hurt army right there. They are gone. They are gone. Getting a nice sack over here would be a nice, like, you know, 12,000-ish gold, so hopefully we can do that. Okay, you are going for that. Okay, they just sacked it. I I think I wiped them out then. Unless they get just fucking out of there. Would you guys beat these guys? Oh my god, that balance of power is good. I think you can handle that now. That is an extremely poor decision. They just gave me a free fucking 12,000 gold by declaring war on me. Yeah, there's a lot of good units in here, but there's enough shit units that we still beat them. Once again, the same fucking map. The Great One is here. That is just gonna pump us. Oh my god. Yeah, 50 melee attack. 50 melee attack on the pump wagons, not factoring in their anti-infantry. So yeah, they're, they're gonna be hitting all of those attacks because these guys have 20 melee defense. I mean, that is just so many pump wagons. It's so many. It's a sea of pump wagons. Uh, we'll use that there, half damage on them instantly, and then we charge them, except for like a couple units who go right after the archers. I would try to break down this gate, but I literally do not think I will be able to do that before the entire battle is over. <laughs> There's only a handful of units in the game that consistently can move around in settlements without it being all weird and wonky. And those are really just single entities. <laughs> There's there's not really much else. Okay, you guys gotta leave. Yeah, we're, we're really taking heavy losses on a few of these units now. I'm not able to pull them out as quickly as I was hoping I would be able to. Okay, Grom is now out of regen. Bit of a shame, but that was a very successful wall, really increased the balance of power. Grom's wall is just incredible, not even for like, you know, saving units. The healing is more important for just getting the army losses on them much earlier, because the more health we have, the more value we have, and the more value we have, the more likely they are to run away, which, you know, is pretty reasonable. But healing all of our units at one time, even if it's not a lot of healing, that is a lot of value. Oh, is that the army losses? Oh, that is. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Sack, then occupy, or loot and occupy? That is the question. I do need the gold, so I, I'm gonna sack this. Do we attack this or not? I think it's a total of one full stack here that we would go against, and I think we beat it. We can back off if we need to, but I'm actually pretty confident. The arrival time is two minutes. It might be two minutes for both of these, so if we could wipe most of this out before they even get on the battlefield, that could be great. Uh, their reinforcement locations are absolute dog shit. I think their first army sits back there, we kill both of these armies, and then these guys just rout. Yeah, two minutes for both of them. I mean, we just get one good charge in, they're fucking gone. Oh, actually, we have the Tormentor Sword, so I'll move this guy up. I'm not going to use Blacktooth Conjuration here because it would just be so ridiculously powerful in this situation. I only use things that break the challenge if they're more cool than they are strong. <laughs> That's my general rule. 
They don't even have like a wide uh, spot to come on the battlefield there. That is incredible for us. This is one of the most beautiful battles I have ever participated in. The only downside is there's so much going on that it's hard to tell what's happening. But back here, you can see the Flappas. Oh, they are just creating an absolute hole in their lines here. They are yeeting some Wood Elves 20 feet into the air. They've actually gotten to the edge of the map. Despite being in like the thickest area of Wood Elves. Holy shit. And then over here, they have a few spears. But we just have so many pump wagons, man. These charges look so good. Uh, dude, definitely charge there. Definitely charge there. Oh my god. Only a few units have taken a lot of damage. Oh, these guys got all the way into the back of them. They're probably gonna route, but that's fine. And if one or two of our units routes, as long as we're just winning this by ridiculous margins, which it looks like we are. Every single one of their models is being constantly attacked on all sides by pump wagons. You can already see the corpses starting to pile up. We already finished them off on the right side. We get the wall in a second, bada boom, we hit the wall. Might have even been a waste. I don't know if we needed that now or if we should have saved that for this army, which is still not moving forward. They're still just sitting there. That's very cool. I think actually we've reached a point where they're so compressed that we can't hit them. Yeah, they're not really taking damage. I think we have to back off here and then come back in. Is there such thing as too many pump wagons? Probably not based off of this. <laughs> they seem to perform pretty well in blobs. I believe that's the army losses right there. That looks like it. They might just be mass routing though. Oh, nope, they're gone. They are very much gone. That was just so good, man. We lost so few units. Close victory? Are you kidding me? Oh my, that is wild. That was a beautiful wall camp. Oh yeah, even the unit that routed lost less than half its models. Oh, that's a lot of replenishment. Very nice. 12%. Beautiful. And then we should be able to just waltz on in here and take that shit. Maybe. Auto resolve. Beautiful. I want to do that, but I don't think I actually should here, just because I'm in very hostile territory, and I want to make sure that I have some health remaining. Quite nice. We're going to go for a little bit of a sack here. And you, yes, you are going for that. You do take that, obviously. But I'm pretty certain that you can't get far enough away for me to not be able to attack you. Wow, holy fuck, he has a lot of movement range. Oh god, how did they move that far? I mean, I obviously they forced march, but that's still more movement range than I thought they had. Today, we're going to use the trees to destroy the trees. You see, pump wagons are made of wood. Only the lowest quality of scrap wood, but still. And wood elves are also made of wood. Why else would they be called that? So with every charge and steamroll in this battle, you can rest assured that the humble greenskins have harnessed the power of nature and thoroughly desecrated it in the process. All right, we're, we're pushing through here. We're using our mass to our advantage. We're blobbing up quite well. I will pop this onto there, I think. E even though they have more units over here, I'm not afraid of anything as much as I'm afraid of the Azrai Spears. All right, over here, though, in the back, we have destroyed them all, so we're going to push in there. Uh, you guys go after them. The Eternal Guard mixed with the Treekin there. That is an unbreakable wall. We might actually have to go around there with some of our units. All right, we're going to use the wall now because we're about to get a charge in two places. That's great. Itchy Nuisance is really carrying us here. It is just such a good ability. So much damage prevention. Please just charge them. Please, just shot. Please. Please. Why? Why? Why are you not charging them? Why are you not doing it? We've taken so much damage here. Just their lord and hero at like a third health each. And they're still fighting. Didn't lose any pump wagons. We can sack this. It said you couldn't reach that. Am I, am I losing my shit? Am I losing my mind? Upon review, I am not actually losing my mind, at least because of this. The movement range indicator fucking lied to me for some reason. Ultimately, it doesn't matter here, but I've never seen that happen before, and I don't know what caused it here. I mean, now we just obviously take that back, but it's gonna be shit now. We just upgraded that, man. That sucks so bad. They keep sending their skirmish cav to just die. I, for some reason, the last, like, three patches, uh, the AI has been the worst I've ever seen at using skirmish cavalry. Oh, and the overall cavalry too, the Knights Errant are moving up. The function against cavalry is the thing I'm most surprised about with the uh, pump wagons. They're doing so incredibly well. We do have to get onto those archers though. As soon as we get through there, that's going to be great. Close victory, once again, little ridiculous. That is either decisive or heroic, motherfucker. That was a loss auto resolve. Uh, yeah, they ranked that down. Fucking hell. I'm going to be honest, I'm not seeing an option other than run into these guys' territory and then eventually come back over. And then perhaps I send you down there as well. Oh, this was almost made for me to get through the underway there. Okay, we go there. Small chance we get wiped out here. I don't know what's over here. All right, we're chilling. We're chilling there. And you take this. Wow. Wow, that's a bad auto-resolve. 
They're gonna need to make a second book for all the grudges they're gonna have after this one. <laughs> Good shit. Took some damage, but nothing more than we can recover in one turn. We're gonna slightly scout over here. Okay. We're not gonna be staying over there. <laughs> if they wanna attack us, we let them attack us. Because I think we win that if they do. You're gonna declare war on me pretty obviously. Like, I would be surprised if you don't. Yeah, that's fine. That's acceptable. I honestly think we kind of rolled them here. What we're gonna do is just not fight Durthu or any of the tree men or tree kin. It is an incredibly good matchup against both the Dryads and the Glade Guard for us. Like, a perfect matchup. Unfortunately, it was not that simple. Charging the Dryads and Glade Guard was super effective, and I managed to swing the balance of power in my favor slightly. The issue is that the Dryads and Glade Guard didn't make up the majority of their balance of power, despite being most of their units. As on top of being an individual powerhouse, Durthu also buffs the ever loving shit out of the Treekin and Tree Men. Those units just so happen to be some of the worst matchups in the entire game for the Pump Wagons. Overall, though, we did lose half of our army while they lost 80% of theirs, but they really only lost like 70%, if that, of their balance of power. Okay, we lost one pump wagon permanently, and that's all. That is not bad. Okay, they can't reach us for a follow-up. Yes, you're very annoying, I am aware. My god, they are so annoying. We move up here. How much for the sack here? Only 5,000 gold, we just take that then. Close victory? Mmm... I can afford that. We're, we're actually okay in terms of our economy. We're better than it looks. We've just spent all of our gold on upgrading things, most of which will just improve our long-term income, so we should be fine. It's not as bad as it looks, I promise. <laughs> One turn taking that back is a little too tempting. Oh, and they still have the army here too. Yeah, that's good. Ooh, four units of Azrai Spears. That is a rough one. They have 23 bonus versus large. Effectively over 50 melee attack then. We're just zooming on up here. We're zooming on up. Please don't get stuck on anything. Okay, as soon as we get through those archers, this shit is over. They're all targeting Grom, which is probably actually good for me. As long as they don't kill him, that's good for me. As soon as they kill him, that's very bad for me. Actually, that'll be very good in there. Oh yeah, that's big value. Big value from that fishy breath. Like a thousand gold value right there. They're breaking. The sheer mass of the pump wagons is just pushing them back. Oh yes, it's over now. With that wall, this is over. The buffs from Grom on these guys are just so insane. They are very strong. The Eternal Guard actually did better than the um, Azrai Spears there. Ooh, Belagar. Just wiped out Durthu, okay. Uh, I don't know how afraid I need to be of Belagar. It's generally a good matchup uh, against the dwarves for us, but he's often extremely strong. Oh, shit, I didn't see because it went through the underway. It didn't show me. I would not have gone the way I did if I saw that Orion had gone here. Uh, we do have Wallmonger again. That is great. That is incredible. What is that looking like? Can I see the balance of power? Oh, it's dead even already. It's dead even already. We can just move right up next to him and both raid in his territory. That'll really piss him off. Yep, he is wisely running away. Okay, he's just encircling. That's relatively fine. Construction cost and weapon strength. Those are both good. Those are definitely both good. Our current bonus is great too, but we don't really need the control. We have that from this. Ah, uh, yeah, let's just run this right away. Fuck it. We do have a chance of getting pump wagons in the wall uh, because we're playing as Grom. It says somewhere here. I don't actually remember where it says that, but we, we do have that. Okay, ambush defense chance plus 75%. So we are completely fine moving up there. Hopefully they try to ambush us. They did not, but actually are we close enough to attack them even though we have no movement range left? No, we're not. Ah, oh, fuck, I shouldn't have used all my movement range. Wait, is this registered as their capital? Why is it green? Okay, is that the one we need to take for the wall then? This one's not green. We'll, we'll give that a shot. Did it work? It worked! Okay. How is that their main settlement? This is literally the main settlement for this region. Ah, he has a second army there. Doesn't look like he's gonna attack me with it though. Okay, that's good. Uh, World Roots Interception. Ooh, that is nice because this army is not very good. The downside is that this map is even worse than this army is. Yeah, they all target Grom because he's so valuable. Then the pump wagons get into their face and they realize, ah, maybe we shouldn't have just focused on Grom. Just completely collapsing their front line is very fun and entirely possible as long as we have more than like three units charging them in one place at once. I believe they're wiped out from the uh, interception there. What do we have in the Waz now? A Feral Hydra, but still no Pump Wagons. That's unfortunate. Uh, what about Grom's? Still no Pump Wagons. I am 99.9% .9 sure that Grom can get Pump Wagons in his army, but I will double check now. 
Wait, did they remove that? Every other greenskin lord has one unit that can be uh, in Waz. Grom is the only one that doesn't have that. Wow, that is so weird. I'm gonna try to get rid of their Waz now. Okay, it does work. I, I think you can only get rid of all the units at once. I think that's the only way it works consistently. I'll start with Grom doing this, and then I'll go down to the dwarves. Once again, though, this will be functionally pretty much identical to a lot of previous fights, so just gonna show a few seconds of it. Quite beautiful, though. This number of pump wagons. And they're done. My god, that took a while. Or at least it felt like it. Really wasn't that long. 20k. Uh, we could loot and occupy, but the settlement is in inhospitable territory, so I think we'll eventually take it, but I'm not concerned about its rank. I'm more concerned about the gold. Now, let's give this a shot. Hopefully he stands in fights. I think he does. Yeah, the problem is their leadership. Other than that, I think we're in a really good spot here. All right, one minute. We should have enough time for, like, one good engagement and then to fuck off. Charging them right away with this first army seemed to be fairly effective. They didn't really have enough units to bog us down or stop us doing what we needed to do, and what we needed to do was kill a lot of them quite quickly. Toss this here. That looks good so far. We don't want to get trapped here for sure, but this is going well so far. All right, all of you back off now. All of you back off. I think you can all get out. Overall, we did a shit ton of damage to them here. I mean, we did like half damage to that first army. Um, we took probably a third damage on ours, so overall, not bad. Not incredible either. They've made a mistake leaving those giant slayers all up alone here. They're their most valuable unit, and we can just entirely destroy them here. Oh no, it's too late to counter charge, buddy. Oh fuck, no, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I didn't mean to wah there. That was, that was a brain fart. I should not have done that. That was a complete waste of that fucking wah. And this first group is not going to do super well, but they're, they're just engaging for us. They took those initial shots, and now these spiky rollers can really deal some damage. I should have sent the spiky rollers in a little sooner, but I don't think it'll matter too much. All right, you guys have routed, but come back in here. We can get another wah. Yes, that should get a lot of value here. It's their lord and heroes at this point that are the majority of their value for sure. The balance of power is in our favor, though, and I think we can probably get the army losses on them without necessarily killing Belagar. At this point, we've routed all their normal units, but Belagar had a few unbreakable ghost heroes in his army. These stunty little lads have 75% physical resistance, and we have no magic attacks. But 15 minutes of being repeatedly run over and teabagged by snotlings was enough to take them down. Wow, half damage, and we fucking destroyed two full mid-tier, you know, not good, but mid-tier dwarven armies. Actually, I think it makes sense now to start grabbing another army here, and then send it over to assist these guys with Orion. Okay, they are actually going to attack this. I was hoping I would have a few turns to build up that army and then come over here. I think we lose this, but I think we only lose it to Orion. I think we kill their army, and then Orion kills us. Orion's army surrounded my settlement on three sides, so in true greenskin fashion, I abandoned the safety of my walls and charged them on the two sides where Orion wasn't. This proved highly effective and we completely rolled them, but ultimately Orion and a handful of archers won this battle. I do think it might have even been possible for us to win that if I played that a little better. I played it pretty well, but I definitely could have done a tiny bit better. Grom is going to be slapping his juicy paunch onto these guys. Crushing the feet. Absolutely crushing the feet. Not like we've won, what, eight identical battles now? Just the exact same battle every fucking time against the Wood Elves. Good army losses. I was hoping I would not have to fight them to the death there, and I didn't. 21,000 gold. Yeah, we take that. Getting somewhat close to the short victory, we have 21 settlements. Yeah, that'll be all for this episode. In the next episode, I'll probably get the short victory and go a little beyond. We shall pump the wagons once more. We are a decent chunk of the way through conquering the Wood Elves. I honestly think we can finish them off entirely within 10 turns. I'm pretty confident on that. Now, for the short victory, we do have 21 out of 30 settlements. I'm probably going to go for like 40 settlements total in this campaign. I want to go a decent bit beyond the short victory, but not too much. Down here, though, we are encircling this, and really, we should probably attack this now. Actually, never mind. I forgot we don't have any siege attackers. The pump wagons are not siege attackers, which they very much are not. I would actually argue they are the furthest thing away from siege attackers in the entire game because they are the worst unit at breaking down gates in more or less the entire game. They're the worst unit that I'm aware of at breaking down gates. Okay, I think we start off with this. Can we get through the gate? Oh, we actually kind of are. They're slowly squeezing through there. Oh, 5,000 damage. Oh, he's getting even more. Oh, fuck. 6,000 damage from those iron breakers just using their ranged weapons. That is extremely painful. 
even less damage than I thought we'd take there, and then you are going to go over here. That's not great. Uh, if they weren't right there, that would be fine. They are right here, though. Alright, Luan and Franz are both there. Why do you go after the small settlement there? Oh my god, your army is disgusting. That is the worst army I've ever... Mm, no, they have Grail Knights. The Grail Knights, Knights of the Realm, those are threats. All right, everything else in this army, not a fucking problem at all. And yeah, we just move back out here. If I could wipe out both Franz and Luan in quick succession, that would be incredible for me. Oh, Franz has a very mediocre army. Then I can probably send this guy down here, but I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to fight this and see how much damage I take. And if I don't take too much damage, then I will move that other army away. If I do take a good amount of damage, then I can just move that army up next to him and he'll have protection against uh, Reikland. Moving your armies to the right places in the right order is like the most important thing when it comes to the campaign. <laughs> Battles do matter, but battles can be like twice as hard or half as hard, depending on the way you're actually moving your armies. They're sending up those fucking uh, skirmish cavalry. They just always do that now. Nope, they're not going to run away. They're just going to fight them. Oh, yep. <laughs> Pegasus Knights are coming up again. A little bit of a groundhog day here. They're sending all of their fucking uh, cavalry up way ahead of their army once more. We'll just use that there. Okay, these Knights of the Realm are gone. That's great. Oh, those Pegasus Knights are gone. The Grail Knights are gone. Yeah. Uh, we're just so effective when we're in like 4v1, 5v1 situations. It doesn't matter if they're uh, anti-large cavalry. We still destroy them. In large enough numbers, pump wagons can kill anything. And the, the peasants are just so weak. They're just so bad. We just absolutely obliterate them here. The balance of power is not that strongly in my favor, but I think it should be. <laughs> I think it's kind of... Kind of lying to me here. There we go. Yep. <laughs> yep. I was like, wow, the balance of power is like only two thirds in our favor, but then we immediately get the army losses. That makes sense. And you can just go on down here. Okay, Franz is attacking. Or wait, no, he went around us to go to the settlement. Oh, shit. Okay, they have that guy coming in. At least we don't get wiped out if we lose this. Fuck, I didn't know they had another army that could get here. Actually, do we win this? What the fuck? This army's garbage. The swordsmen will do nothing to the pump wagons. The hand gunners, they could do a lot, but we won't let them. The pistolers actually might be a good bit of a problem. It depends how they play with them. They probably won't play very well with them. The archers, nothing. They're going to do nothing. I'm seeing so many ways that we can trade so well here, especially with a nice wall that these guys will help us get by dying very quickly. Yeah, I think we honestly win this. It's going to be fucking close. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh, why did I fight it with large armies? Why did I fight it with large armies? Oh, fuck. That is such a grievous mistake to make. I honestly think we still stand some chance, though. We do have better reinforcement time. We can wipe these guys out. That'll probably trigger them to charge us, but fuck. That's still so bad for us. That's still so much worse for us than the alternative. Oh, they're splitting up their army so nicely for me. They just have archers just sitting there for no reason. I don't know why they're doing that. They have hand gunners sitting there for no reason. I don't know why they're doing that. They have even more hand gunners just sitting over there as well. They've chosen the brilliant strategy of just leave their ranged units completely undefended in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> All right, if you guys could get into combat with friends, that's great. Oh, friends, once again, doesn't have regen. Grom does, and they've taken equal damage so far. So that means that it's very strongly in Grom's favor. We move back here for sure. And then potentially, I think we all just move over here. I think our whole shit just moves over there. Except for you guys who are going to get charged in the rear. Uh, oh, we don't have Grom's wall. We don't have Grom's wall. Oh, that turns it against us too. Because Grom's wall, the healing from that is so important for us. Fuck. We're running out of health. We're running out of models. Okay, we charge in there. We charge in there hard. I, I don't think we have the strength for this at this point. We're, we can actually kill friends though, I think. But I don't think we necessarily win this battle overall. Uh, my micro is at its limits. Franz is dead. Franz is dead. He only controlled the first army. The first army is the only one that gets the leadership debuff, actually. I didn't really consider that until this moment. That's very unfortunate. Losing this battle is going to hurt. And actually, what we do is we, we salvage everything we can here. It was at exactly this moment that I remembered I got that fucking dog in me. And so does Grob. Towards the beginning of this campaign, I managed to beat entire armies using only Grom and one unit of pump wagons. And in this situation, I'm against one army, and I have a total of approximately three units of full pump wagons remaining. Now, as you can see, the balance of power, it is complete dog shit. It is about as bad as it could be without us getting the army losses. But through some absurd determination and a good 25 minutes of non-stop cycle charging, we managed to barely, and I mean fucking barely, squeak out an extraordinarily Pyrrhic victory.
All right, we get those bonuses. Those are big buffs. Please break them quick. Yes, yes, yes. We have like 50 melee attack plus charge bonus. We're hitting every attack. Oh, is that it? That's it. That's it. I knew that would be it. Yes. Oh my god. Oh, that is so ridiculous, but we fucking got it. I mean, obviously, Grom, in and of himself, got a fair bit of value. But some of these pump wagons got like over 2,000 gold value too. We lost two units. Ah, that's sad. That's a real shame. But they lost a few more than two units. They lost most of their armies there. Fuck it. Grom's going non-stop, baby. Yep, we fucking do this as well. This is not going to be an easy one, but I think we're already doing pretty well, honestly. Please give me the wall. Please give me the wall. I need the wall right now. There we go. There we go. Oh, that saves a lot of our units. We kind of brute forced this, but they only have one gate, so we didn't have much of a choice. Actually, we loot and occupy that for sure. Nice. Started building up another army here just to go after these guys, make sure they don't get too much ground on me. Grom the Paunch, I'm thinking, is going to go for Uber's Reich because that is a 10,000 gold sack, and I think we can take it afterwards. Down here, this guy's just slowly dealing with the dwarves still. I mean, taking free settlements, I might sell them to another faction eventually. I don't know, we'll see. But I don't think Beligar is going to recover enough to really pose a threat to me. I just don't want to go too far over here because Karazakarak could be a problem. They're not much of a fan there. That is minus 599 relations. Grom is going to turn the Uber's Reich 5 into the Uber's Reich 0. I really like that they have the Uber's Reich 5 in the settlement. It's a nice, like, vague recreation of them, but I think they should make it a little more realistic by causing Carillion to do friendly fire with 70% of her shots. And they are done. Very nice. Now these guys can pretty clearly just go back in here and finish the Wood Elves off. Uh, their settlements are going to be worth quite a bit soon again. Here, this should be fairly easy to wipe out this army, even if it's high tier, I'm confident. Yeah, that's actually not a bad army. Those two units of Unbreakable Greatswords are going to do a lot of damage to us. We're going to go in immediately because they are tired to begin with. Oh, and we'll have a really nice fishy breath here in a second. Let's actually see. Yeah, like 500 plus value off of that alone. We pop that 40% resistance. Uh, and then over here on this right side, we're going to crumble them pretty much instantly. Okay, Sigmar's Sons, four models left. The Greatswords, ten. They're gone. They're gone. And this is why you don't force march into a settlement right next to another army that is much stronger than you. <laughs> Once again, we can just bunny hop and destroy another army, actually two armies this time, and take a settlement. We have no reason not to do that. We can just keep these guys weak permanently as long as they keep having their armies in settlements very easy to wipe out near Grom. And actually, first, because I'm so very confident here, I will go for Grom's mission, finally. Even though we have only 18 units in Grom's army, I'm still just so extremely confident. Definitely going to be using the Banner of Eternal Flame, and I'm going to remember what units this is on. I'm going to put it onto the spiky rollers, because these guys are quite weak to fire damage, and we get fire damage from this, which is just great. Over 20% more damage against the trolls, so should trade very well against them, given that. And also, their leadership is below 60 baseline. Ours with Grom, 90 fucking 1. So, <laughs> quite good, considering that we're on very hard campaign and battle difficulty. Quite an interesting name. I wonder what exactly that git is guzzling. <laughs> so, we could go back here and deal with these guys, but we're fast enough that we don't need to. We're just gonna charge that main army. As per usual, the skirmish cavalry have decided to die. Come on, get in there. You gotta keep that uh, flaming attack on them. There we go. They should deal with the trolls pretty well with that. Wow, that Arachnarch Spider is taking a lot of damage. I did not think the Pump Wagons would do well against it, but I guess because it's such a large hitbox and they have such high AP. There we go. They're finally gone. Unless they have some Unbreakable Unit, which they don't. Ooh, we just got the Eagle Talons. There's a very nice secret recipe called the Elven Foie Gras, which you make by combining some spores and shrooms with some beast bits, and the Eagle Talons is a third ingredient. 50 unit experience gain per turn, all armies, and minus two global recruitment duration, and plus four recruit rank, all armies, faction wide. That is very, very nice. That is a lot of ingredients, but my god, is this going to be very good for us. And yeah, we can go for Beligar here. There are some Slayers in here, but I mean, we just outnumber them by so much. We can surround them and wipe them out. Okay, 2 minutes, 22 seconds reinforcement time. That reinforcement location is very unfortunate because that means we don't really have the wall camp advantage. We're going to wait for them to move up. Hmm, they are playing this about as well as they can. I'm a little impressed. Not very impressed, but a little impressed by the AI here. Charging the Giant Slayers. Back off a little bit here. Drop that debuff on them. There we go. Down to half health. That's great. Massive damage on those Slayers. 
Should I stay in extended combat there? Probably not, but they can chase me down pretty effectively. They're very fast for dwarves. Now over here, you guys actually are going to be able to charge pretty much all of their ranged units. Okay, you have taken damage way faster than I expected. You've got to pull out, but you did do some decent damage to them. Mm, those giant slayers are down to one model. They don't matter anymore. We're going to just push in here. If we can break this group, then these guys are all freed up. This is unfortunately still losable at this point. I mean, their, their single entities are just so absurdly powerful. Okay, that was more damage than I thought we would take. They did not get the army losses for a long time there, and those ghost heroes, they just stuck around. They were not wanting to die. <laughs> you have two settlements and no balance of power. I don't feel like that defensive alliance, no thanks. Reichland now also has no balance of power, which is very good for us. They're not recruiting right now as well. I feel like going for Altdorf is the better move in this situation. That is a lot of halberdiers, enough that this will actually be a little hard. I haven't been able to get a control point victory once in this campaign, so I would like to see if I can get that here. Ooh, those are handgunners, those are handgunners. Oh, no, 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 thank you. Actually, we dodged them. Holy shit, we dodged them. That's crazy. If I can cap the control points with Grom, I will, because I haven't had a single control point victory so far this campaign. Okay, Grom broke down the gate before they got anywhere near him. Now we just go for the main control point, because they're going to take forever to get back there. We're also going to send the Flappers up here. All of you charge the Reichsguard. You're not going to do amazingly, but you're not going to completely lose against them. Actually, they just stopped. The Reichsguard just stopped right before I charged them. They did not counter charge. All right, that's great. <laughs> we get that in a second, and I don't think they can take it back from us in a reasonable time. Ooh, we might be fucked here. We got to break. Oh, no, that's bad. That is that is a hammer and anvil, except for the anvil is coming in after the hammer, because the hammer is also very difficult to kill. Fuck. As soon as we take this, I might send Grom to help them. I think I do that because they're going to get hurt there. Oh, man. I really thought the Reichsguard would keep going down quickly. But as soon as we lost our uh, charge bonus, their melee defense is like 15 higher than our melee attack with all the buffs they have right now. So the Great One's here. That's great. We use all these other abilities. The Reichsguard should now go down very quickly because our melee attack is much higher. I played that poorly, but they should be able to get off the battlefield here. They do have a good amount of mass, a good amount of momentum. Oh god, there's two units that have just been going at that gate for so long. They're doing nothing. Oh, actually, we just won by the control points. I guess giving the AI just three free units of flappers to easily kill was actually an effective strategy there, even though it was definitely not intentional. <laughs> We're just going to claim this once again. Crushing the feet, really. My god. Oh, they do have Luan. That's why. They have Luan. Oh, shit. I still think that we win this simply because we crush his entire army very quickly. Great. Skirmish Cav gone. The AI is literally the worst they've ever been at using Skirmish Cav. I don't love the way they're playing this because they're playing this fairly well. I think we just hard charge that right side and then we'll see what we can do with the left side here. I think we actually just charge their center here. If we just stop those peasant bowmen from firing, their melee units are going to do absolutely nothing against us. All right, do not stop just because Luan is attacking you. That is no excuse to stop moving. All right, very effective so far. 10 out of 10 so far. I don't think we could be doing much better than we are. The question is, will Luan route? That is the only question in my mind here. He's actually taking damage. He's actually taking damage. He has such a big hitbox. That might be why. Oh, yeah. It's because so many of them are hitting him. It's like 12, 14 maybe units of pump wagons that are all hitting him at once. Okay, and they got the army losses. That's great. That's awesome. He's such a strong fighter, but he just keeps playing so fucking poorly. Not even too much damage. That is actually incredible. Uh, I do want to ideally send over an army to deal with the High Elves here. I think Snorko might be that guy. I think he might have that dog in him. Or rather that wheel in him. That pump in him? That wagon in him? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> he has the combination of things inside of him that will allow him to win, hopefully. <laughs> Humphrey Hammerheim. That is a powerful name. <laughs> Okay, can I reach any major armies? Yes, I can. You get wiped out. Uh, that is a good army. It's actually going to be very good for me to wipe that out now. A lot of great swords, a lot of halberdiers. Not much else of value, though. The huntsmen are good. The huntsmen are actually good in this matchup, too. I don't want to fight them into trees. I want to fight the right side of them. The one thing to remember here is that, like, we're this ridiculously strong without even having a caster in our army. <laughs> Grom would be so much stronger with, like, a really good uh, spellcaster here. And he's already just way too fucking strong. Great, great damage on this right side. They're just done. We're just too strong, man. We're just too fucking strong. Ah, uh, yes, that seems like a very good decision for you to make more her. We are going to sack and then occupy this. Oh, God, come on. <laughs> come on, auto-resolve. Some damage, but nothing that we can't deal with. 
Hopefully they'll actually stand and fight. If they do, that's great. Oh, if they have bad reinforcement location, that's even better. Oh, they're not going to do that. Okay. I have fought on this map no less than 15 times, potentially 20. Oh, that was just friendly fire, you motherfucker. Oh, God. I thought that was a good angle. There we go. We took a lot of damage. I just played that maximum speed. Oh, my God. I'm so done with the fucking wood elves. Finally, these guys are freed up. Oh, awesome. For a small settlement, that is a lot of value. That is 15,000 goddamn value. Gonna loot and occupy because I don't think I have the movement range. Oh. We can we can just fucking raid them then. Ah, ah, you attacked immediately. That's less annoying. But why do I lose a pump wagon there? And you're dead. All right, fine. Talslin? Tal... Talzian? I, I have no idea how to pronounce that. But they're gone. All right, Orion is permanently dead. Great, awesome. You actually have to take this settlement because you can't move otherwise. But it's worth so much that it's just a good idea regardless. Uh, the Snorko have Lightning Strike. I don't know if Snorko has Lightning Strike. I don't think he does. Yep, you take that back. That's fine. We could absolutely win this. We have some really good trades here. I don't need to keep this settlement. I could take it back pretty quickly, but I just have no reason not to fight this. This will actually be a pretty interesting one, I think. They don't have enough to protect the crossbows, and also our archers will trade so well against those halberdiers. The Empire Knights are going to be tough, but the Orc Biggins should take them. Okay, they split up into two sections too. God damn, they're making my life too easy here. Okay, we block this off to reduce their options. Why not? All the boys are going to charge out immediately. We're going to see if we can get a charge with the Orc Biggins. They have 52 charge bonus right now. The Pistolers are probably going to just decide to die. They usually will do something like that. Yeah, those Empire Knights are great when they're in a good matchup, and this is not a good matchup for them. Uh, and they're, they're actually not that great in good matchups even. They're okay in good matchups. Uh, we go after those crossbows. You guys also go after those crossbows. Shoot the Empire Knights there, I think. Actually, no, shoot the Halberdiers. They are decent in melee against infantry, but when they're getting shot... They do not hold up. All right, we're going to go for a flank there. We're also going to go for a flank here if possible. These guys may be lost here, but they will get a lot of value first. Then once those crossbowmen start running, they're gone. Oh, we're going to rebuild the wall behind them so they can't escape. That is diabolical. And we won that. Gotta love when the AI actually decides to attack one of your settlements when they don't have a hundred times the strength that you do. <laughs> can be very fun. Can be very fun as long as they actually attack it and don't just encircle it for fucking four years. Gonna start with Grom taking Nuln. Did not take too long. Grom can temporarily get up to over 80% physical resistance now, so he's he's a little strong, considering he also has an effective health pool of like 15-ish thousand. Now we have the Nuln Grand Prix. I don't know if this recruit rank is just local or if it's uh, global. That would be really cool if it's global, but I think we're gonna finish this campaign before we actually get that. Gonna quickly destroy Gelt just because we can. Ooh, he does have a steam tank in here, but other than that, this is not a very good army. Ah, they are up the hill. I don't like that. I'll see what I can do to them in terms of casting. Okay, now they're moving up. And now we can fight them on much more advantageous terrain. Why is the steam tank still back there? Okay, the steam tank just doesn't want to be part of the army. That's fine. <laughs> Definitely intentional. Uh, it looks like the sides have most of their valuable units. I want to get on the archers in the center, though. And Gelt is also in the middle. If we can get on him, that's great, because he will get a good amount of value. He'll probably also get a good amount of friendly fire. Uh, just beeline to our fucking pump wagon there. The one pump wagon in the crowd of swordsmen, and we hit it. Uh, we're going to toss this in the middle, because we are just the most surrounded there. Uh, they should go down quickly. Here, they're going down quickly. Their leadership is actually way worse than I thought it would be. Uh, I will try and not do friendly fire here. I'm, I'm doing my best. I completely missed this at the time, but my second spell cast... Well, it just kind of obliterated this guy. He survived it, but it hit him head on. I am genuinely incapable of not doing friendly fire with Vindictive Glare. The pump wagons, to be fair though, are pretty easy to do friendly fire on by accident. And the vast majority of their army's already routed. The one flagellant remaining. You're really gonna win this one, buddy. You're really gonna get it. Oh, get back up. You got this. You got this, buddy. Yep, you got this. Go for it. And I think he's dead. <laughs> He nearly got it. He nearly got it. He nearly wiped out my whole army there. Uh, oh, the steam tank. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about the fucking steam tank. Uh, because it never moved up. Okay. <laughs> I was like, why? Why is the balance of power not like completely in my favor? We already got the army losses on them. Uh, that would be it. Please die. All right, you're dead. I think we just kind of move up and raid here because I don't see any other armies. If they had any more armies here, they probably wouldn't even bother sending them because we're not that much stronger than them. If they move up and attack us, we then take this next turn. It will not be hard. If they don't, then this could be a little bit of a problem. So naturally, they did not attack us. That would have been far too convenient. 
There are multiple layers to the pain that I experienced in the following section. So, it begins with a bad decision. What I do is I attack the army outside the settlement with both of my armies. Not the worst decision in the world, not too bad, but if I did it last turn, they would have been in Force March and it would have been their larger army, so that would have been better. And also, I could have encircled the settlement, then isolated the army outside of the settlement and fought it on its own, then fought the settlement. Both of those would have been better, so I, I admit that, I'm aware of that, that decision was definitely bad. But, <laughs> for some reason, in this battle, every time the second army started coming onto the battlefield, which actually did take a while because I fought this using small armies, the game crashed. I played it twice, both times it crashed at the exact same point. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't think it's my mods. I'm literally just using like lighting mods. Here's my mod list right now. There's nothing in here that I think could possibly cause this. And I've had this bug before, but usually it's resolved by just fighting the battle again. Uh, it was not this time. So what I do instead is I encircle the settlement now, finally, because I don't really have a choice. And I did actually go after the other army, but then... The settlement garrison and the army in the settlement sallied it out to attack me, so this is pretty good. It's definitely worse than the other options that I explained earlier that I should have done, but I'm gonna show you that battle now. It was a very interesting one. Hmm, I don't love this map, but we are gonna be able to go downhill into them. Uh, we are fighting this with small armies, so that should make it a little easier micro-wise. Perfect, they're sending the skirmish cav up to just die as per usual gonna wait a second. Oh, they're sending their cavalry up first. That's great. That, actually, they sent the Great Eagle first, but those Illyrian Reavers, and I think they have some Silver Helms. Yeah, they do have some Silver Helms. Those are gonna go down without too much of a hitch. Okay, they still have a little bit of Skirmish Cavalry. God, those archers. Oh, they can shoot so far. We're, we're gonna actually just run straight into those archers with these guys. I think we can do that very effectively. We are gonna get shot quite a bit in the middle here. Okay, you guys go after the Silver Helms. Great, great, great. We pull back in the middle. We don't fight those spears yet, and we will get onto those archers in a few seconds here. We're taking a lot of damage while we're charging them because, I mean, they do a fuck ton of damage when they shoot us. Oh, yeah, this is looking nice. They do have some Lothurn Sea Guard here. They will be a bit of a problem, but the rest of those archers are gone. Uh, we're actually going to hard charge these guys. And yeah, they do have spearmen and stuff coming back here. We're going to back off here. Over here, not looking too bad. I wish we could have finished these guys off before those other ones got back in here. We're going to pull back here again and then recharge them. We don't want to just be standing still and getting attacked by spearmen, but if we're charging them hard enough with enough of our units, we can actually deal with them quite effectively. You know what, we're in melee enough right now that I will hit that wall. It's not a perfect one, but I'm ideally not going to have my full army in combat uh, for the rest of this fight. Okay, no, 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 no. One of your models is not a reason for all of your models to die. That's very stupid. Please stop doing that. We're going to try and wipe out this section of their army pretty quickly. The balance of power still being in my favor is honestly surprising. My first army is at half health, and their second army is coming onto the battlefield at full health. Although they don't have the full army on yet. We'll see. We'll see once that happens. Yeah, it looks like they're actually going to route very quickly here. No matter how we fight those Phoenix Guard, we are going to take a lot of damage, so I think we may as well just try and sandwich them here. If we could attack them from both sides at once... Shit, those Phoenix Guard... Oh, they're actually not getting that much value. That was a pretty perfect sandwich. You can see they're completely surrounded there. We're going to go for even more charges here if we can. Uh, this section is taking a lot of damage there. Those weren't the best trades, but I didn't see a way to get better trades right there. Please route. You're not unbreakable. Why do you have 54 fucking leadership right now? Okay, now they're routing. Now we pull back out. Silver and guard. Ugh. I think we can deal with them, though. I think we can deal with them there. All right, all of you charge those archers. All of you. Yeah, they are holding up pretty well here. But I, we're not going to be able to isolate them more than we have here. Five Phoenix Garden. They're still fighting. My god. They do have more units coming in. Okay, but they're all archers. We can actually just kind of spawn camp them here. Oh, those are Silver Helms. Fuck. All right, we toss this onto them. Uh, we're going to take a lot of damage there. Oh, we need to outnumber Silver Helms. All right, you guys charge them. Oh, we have four units left to come in. They are not full health, but we do have the majority of the balance of power already, and they are out of units now. There we go. Okay, we got to chase them down very carefully here. Feels good to actually be able to fight a battle without the game fucking crashing. I'm glad they sallied out, though. If they did not sally out, I genuinely don't know if I could have won that. We get a little replenishment. I don't think anyone else can reach us. Yeah, the High Elves, they cannot reach us. They have a few good armies coming to destroy us. But that's... We don't need to keep this. We're literally just getting this for the short victory. I don't actually want to deal with the Elven Donut again. I've already done that. Oh, we can auto-resolve this. Beautiful. For some reason, I haven't actually gotten the notification. But I have gotten the short victory. I've met both the conditions. 
Uh, we're just gonna call that. Fuck it. Short victory achieved. It, it says that I've done all the conditions for it, but it also hasn't given me, like, the notification thing. Awesome. Overall, we have done very well this campaign. Honestly, one of the easier campaigns I've done, not gonna lie. The only real difficulty was the lack of auto-resolves, and against some large units, like for example the Treekin, uh, they were just deadly. <laughs> we could not trade well against them. The pump wagons have pumped all they're going to pump. Thanks for watching, big thanks to my patrons and YouTube members as always, and yeah, the next campaign, I'm thinking it's gonna be tree only. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty certain I'm gonna go for tree only, so that'll be very fun, I'm very excited for that one.